In 2013, Hong Kong officials said they will ensure that by 2022, on average, each resident will produce no more than 800 grams of waste a day. Six years later, in 2019, residents were tossing nearly double that amount. Today, Hong Kong sends more of its daily waste to its landfills than they are built to handle, and now the city has run out of space. Solid waste situation is at a crisis situation. We cannot keep on expanding, expanding our landfill. Land in Hong Kong is scarce. We don't have that、uh, leisure to use our precious land to just bury our waste. A new law approved in August hopes to nip the problem in the bud, making residents pay for disposing of their rubbish. The goal is zero landfill by 2035. The waste instead being recycled or sent to an incinerator plant that is currently being built. But is Hong Kong ready for the challenge? If you want to convince the community that they're ready, or that government is ready, is make sure that all our waste handling looks up to speed. And right now, people don't have any confidence. So, in this episode of Hong Kong Inquirer, I'm setting off on a journey to investigate. If the newly passed government measures to tackle waste will help the city reach its goal of zero landfill by 2035. Hong Kong is one of the world's most densely populated cities. Nearly 7.5 million people live here. They generate so much waste it could fill up a thousand and two hundred of the city's double-decker buses every single day. Thirty percent of it is food waste, twenty-four percent paper and plastic ranks third. In August, the city's legislative council approved a new waste charging law to nudge residents to reduce garbage. Residents must pay for their rubbish, at least partially. So, fifty Hong Kong dollars—that's what my Euro working meal costs. It's estimated that the waste charging scheme will require an average household to pay about thirty-three Hong Kong dollars to fifty-five Hong Kong dollars per month to dispose of their rubbish. Medium-sized commercial outlets like restaurants could pay up to twelve thousand Hong Kong dollars per month. Fifty Hong Kong dollars. Is it enough to motivate people? I took to the streets to see what people think of it. 每一位市民應該都有個叫做公民嘅責任去處理翻自己嘅垃圾嘅。咁如果你要將啲垃圾交俾政府去幫你處理嘅話，俾錢亦都係好合情合理嘅。即係如果你呢個咁嘅 charges 咧，我諗就唔係會話特別多人咧去，因為呢個 charges 而去 reduce 啲垃圾。即係我覺得你反而要 promote 下，究竟即係你咁製造咁多垃圾，啲垃圾去咗邊咧？誒、呃、會影響唔會唔會影響到個環境呢？咁我覺得呢個係一個都係一個好嘅政策嚟嘅，因為其實每一個人都對環保係有責任啦，係啦。誒、呃、咁但係可能對於某一啲家庭嚟講，雖然三十至五十蚊好似唔係好多咁樣，但係可能對於佢哋都有一定嘅壓力咯。I met with Paul Zimmerman, district councillor from Port Fu Lan in Hong Kong Southern Districts. To understand this, he is the chief executive of Designing Hong Kong, an NGO working on sustainable living. It kind of puts it into people's pockets or takes the money out of people's pocket for the cost of waste, and it gets the community to realize that there is a cost to to waste. I mean, I've seen it in my in my district in Port Phillip.、Um, you know, if the, the minibus company wants to put up ten cents. Uh, although people live in a thirty, forty, fifty million dollar apartment,、uh, they will object and will fight for that ten cents. So people are very cost conscious、uh, in Hong Kong. But I, my, you know, my feeling is that people are really concerned that the city isn't ready. And right now, people don't have any confidence. You know, they see a lot of waste on the side of the road. They see a lot of littering, and so people have a, have a sense that if you put waste charging up, that more people will put waste on the side of the road. I e that the systems are not ready. The idea of charging people for cleaning their waste were first floated nearly 16 years ago. The fact it's been approved only now underscores how much a touchy issue city politicians think it is. The new law is planned to come into effect only in 2023, giving the city time to get infrastructure and mindset in place. But for now, there's no specific date. 
at which they would start to charge for ways. I met Edwin Lau of the advocacy group Green Us to understand what were the main issues in getting this game off and started. This is uh, where we ought, or I would use another word, where we ridiculous. If a law is passed, it, is, it doesn't come with an effective date. So that means, practically, the law cannot be executable. So when I'm going to be charged, no one can tell at the moment. So it is a lot of uncertainties. First, is the economic situation 18 months down the road. If everything back to normal, I think that shouldn't be a problem at all. That's Frankie Ick, the legislator who chairs a bill committee studying the waste charging scheme. On the other hand, we have, we have been asking the government, uh, how are you going to do it? Just passing the bill doesn't mean everything will be done uh, I mean, automatically. So how are you going to do the, and law, the law enforcement how to deal with those are what we call the three new buildings. That means uh, the managed properties. So how are you doing, going to handle that? So all these are the things that we have been asking and the government did not come up with an answer for us. And also uh, the government had to uh, liaise with the uh, property management companies so that they can work together. And because the, the government is relying on them to do the garbage collection within the estate area. The new law requires residents to dump waste only in government-approved waste bags that will come in nine sizes, costing about 11 cents per liter of rubbish. Oversized items will have to be tagged separately with a label that costs 11 Hong Kong dollars. The law doesn't require sorting biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste, but it is aimed at getting people to use the recycle bins or get their waste to a recycling point instead, which will be free. Those that don't use specified bags will be liable to a fine of 1,500 Hong Kong dollars. This is not a pioneering solution. Hong Kong lags nearly two decades behind its regional neighbors in Taipei and Seoul, where the scheme was successfully applied and boosted recycling rate to 60%. Now, remember when I was in, uh, I visited Taiwan, I think a few years back, and then after dinner, walking around on the street, and then all of a sudden, uh, I hear some uh, ringing uh, uh, musical sound. Then I thought, hey, this is uh, in Hong Kong, normally it's for ice cream selling, right, <laughs> on the street. And then I, what's happening? Look around, and then people are queuing up. And then I saw a, a, a vehicle pass by, a stop over there. And then everybody, actually they're hanging up their garbage. So, and then uh, separate into different things. Well, I said, amazing, How, why, why Taiwan can do it? And then why Hong Kong cannot do it? So it goes back to the cultural difference. I think at the end of the day, education. Reducing waste is a sore point in Hong Kong. Back in 2010, the city recycled nearly half of the municipal solid waste it generated. Last year, in 2020, that dropped to only a third of its waste. The city is going in the wrong direction. It was very frustrating that uh, I found that it is very difficult to recycle each material, that I am not very familiarized with that's George Wong. After struggling with waste segregation at home, he launched a startup that offers door-to-door -door collection of missed dry waste. His company then segregates the waste at its warehouse and delivers it for recycling. The problem now, when uh, people like me, I was studying in local school when I was small, actually I have no idea what we are using and I don't even know how to shot our plastic. I don't even know what type they are, why they are this type, what their name are. The knowledge in recycling is very, we really lack of them in our studying in school. In Hong Kong, you're never too far from recycling bin. In fact, the city has one set of recycling bins for about every 400 people. 
you would imagine that would enable more waste segregation and recycling. We also have the uh, uh, free color recycling bins. But the problem here in Hong Kong is actually the media in the past had found out that the uh, cleaners or the caretakers, when they collect, somehow they mix up with the other garbage and throw it into the garbage truck. Then they will end up in our landfills, not just once, but a couple of times. And so that makes the public lose the confidence in our uh, pre collabin the, the public recycling system. Somehow they will think, why bother? Or forget about it. Hong Kong's restaurant earnings logged a record decline last year, dropping 29.4% from 2019 as the COVID-19 pandemic and sweeping social distancing regulations took a devastating toll on the city's catering sector. Is this the right time to hit them with more costs? Uh, uh, I have a little research. One of the restaurants in Hong Kong is about 200 restaurants. It's about 200 restaurants. It's about 200 restaurants. Uh, because they, they pay quite a lot for that. And they, they said it's unfair because we pay the, uh, the wastewater treatment and additional charges and we are, why we have to pay for all this? And then the government at the end of the day they say, okay, if you guys do a good job uh, of the separation of wastes at the source, I will take this after separation type of uh, waste free of charge so you don't have to pay for it. But for the rest, you are responsible. Before finishing my journey, there was one more place I wanted to go for answers. I mean, we do not underestimate challenges ahead because this uh, policy, I mean, it, has, it affects everyone in the city and we know that it's going to change uh, the behavior of everyone. So, and we know that uh, enforcement is one of the key battles that we have to fight on uh, in, the coming, in the coming days. So during the 18 months preparatory period, we will focus a lot on education and publicity because we, do, we know that it's impossible that we I mean, allocate a lot of manpower just because people are not using the designated bag when they dump the waste. And in fact, we have been uh, allocating additional resources since we introduced the bill in 2018. So over the past few years, we have been allocating additional resources on several pilot schemes on waste reduction and recycling. For example, now we have rebranded 22 recycling stores and we have some regular collection points for recyclables and we provide a one-stop service for collecting like at least eight types of collect uh, recyclables at community levels. We have also launched some pilot schemes to collect food waste and we have also established an outreaching team so to, po to help us to prepare for the implementation of MS subcharge and we're going to spend more on this efforts. Good times or not, the government measures are coming, expected to be in full force in 2023. The question, however, still remains, will this be enough to change people's mindsets? And will citizens be willing to join the force to increase the recycling and reduce the solid waste that is left? What is your thought on the issue? Please drop a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. We'll be bringing you new increase every month here in Hong Kong.